Welcome to Sunday, the 14th of June in the year of our Lord 2020 as Church of the Resurrection, Bugolobi. Our monthly theme is stewardship, stewardship, and today our topic is the dominion mandate, the dominion mandate. I would ordinarily address you with a mask. But since there's a very safe distance between me and my next neighbor, I would like uh, to kindly ask that I put it off for now as I seek to communicate this message with you. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for our creation and preservation. And thank you for the blessings that you give us in life. Thank you that you created us and given us opportunity to be co-creators with you and to be people who are part of your administration on earth. We pray that even as we approach this word, that your Holy Spirit will shed light upon it and will understand it to your praise and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, is a very important statement and God blessed them. He blessed Adam and Eve and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill and replenish the earth. This is the dominion mandate. We'd like to convey our condolences to your family who lost your dear ones, especially Engineer Nia Mugume and family and uh, the Biamakamas on the loss of your mom. May God's comfort be your portion. And we are mindful of a number of us who have relatives who are sick, and indeed us who are sick, we raise you to the Lord's keeping. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit watch over you. Amen. The dominion mandate is the authority God gave to humankind to harness or to tame his creation for his glory and for kingdom purposes. A mandate is to assert God's will over the earth, over the land, over the sea, over the fish, over the plant and animal kingdom, over the air, over the entire ecosystem for his purposes and for his glory. So they are authorized, one, to be fruitful, to increase and to replenish the earth. In this context of stewardship, Humanity is in charge of God's earthly estate. And this earthly estate is especially on planet Earth. And uh, the psalmist in Psalm 24, verse 1, we see the psalmist crying out. This is a revelation. He cries out and says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the fish, the cattle, even the people. The earth is the Lord's. So man is a steward of God's earthly estate to look after it very well, to work it, to engage it, to adjust some asset forms for gain, and to invest and cause multiplication. But all as a steward, they are expected not only to be fruitful, but also to be faithful and to be careful managers of God's estate. This increase is it's supposed to be an immediate one. We see him increasing human beings. The children that were born to Adam and, and Eve, Cain, Abel, Seth, and their brothers and sisters, who number, uh, uh, actually, there are more than 40 in all. Adam had a lot of children. And these are the very first sign of increase of humanity. The bearing of children is one sign of this increase. It's a democratic, uh, demographic mandate. To replenish the earth is the mandate not just to utilize and exploit it or extract materials, but to do it responsibly. To replenish in this sense means to fill up again or to restore to former condition. When you Look at the Garden of Eden. It was a very perfect environment. 
was very balanced as an ecosystem. Actually, Adam and Eve didn't need to put on any clothing. It was so well balanced, the warmth and the cold and the cool. The Lord says he used to visit them in the cool of the day, in the evenings. There were no thieves, therefore there were not, was no gate, need for gates. There were, it was a balanced nutrition of fruit and vegetables. And no wonder they lived very long lives, 100, 900, 700 years, because the system was so well balanced and there was no disease. Their lifestyle didn't include lifestyle diseases. The result was long life. But the fall changed this balance. This fall changed this balance. And an animal died to provide a skin for their covering. They were thrown out of this perfect environment in case they should stay in and eat on the, a tree which would make them live forever in their sinful state. It was going to, Adam was going to grow and work the soil this time and was going to grow thorns and thistles and Adam would have to work it with his sweat and labor before he was just managing and looking after the growth but now there would even be crop failure the ecosystem was affected by sin elsewhere we see the apostle paul talking about even all creation groaning and waiting for the redemption of them of mankind currently we have a global debate about global warming that is caused by carbon emissions from industries, from greenhouses, and other fossil energy pollutions. That the ozone layer is being depleted, and the earth is groaning as a result of these man-made activities. Even this virus pandemic that is planned on that has, it is, it, is, it is said to have been a result of tampering with the balance of nature. So replenishing the earth means that the earth needs to follow, to have time to rest. It needs organic manuring and balance utilization. Right now, there's overexploitation because of greed that has led to waste. Greed leads to waste. When in the book of Exodus, at the time when the Israelites were served with manna, if you collected more than a day's worth, it would rot. And there are people who tried it, and they collected more than they needed, and they, they hoarded it, but it rot and was wasted. There's a lot of greed that is at the base of exploitation, of a wrong utilization of, and wrong harnessing of the earth. And as a result, we have become bad stewards of God's creation. We incur food losses between harvest and utilization. There's losses in storage, losses in transport, and even losses in over preparation. We prepare more than we can we can consume and there are wasted leftovers just to mention food and yet there are others who don't have enough so greed greed is at the heart of the wrong harnessing and wrong exploitation of god's resources as he has given us this mandate so the expectation the exploitation of non-renewable energy like coal and, and oil it has also brought it's part of the global debate now there's concern that we have in uganda we've cut down many many natural forests looking for charcoal and we are not even planting trees we have wasted our wetlands our water catchment areas we are polluting our water bodies and this is not good stewardship it's a challenge as good stewards. We are expected to know that actually the earth is the Lord's. We don't 
it has been given to us to use when we are on earth and we are to use it responsibly because those who are coming after us are going to depend on it as well. And remember, we are going to give accountability. We cut down trees. We really need to check ourselves as individuals and as families. Are we replenishing the earth or we are exploiting it to destruction? So some simple things like this. Don't waste food at home. Prepare enough that you can consume. And if you've discovered you have more than you may consume, kindly share with neighbors who may not have. Secondly, don't waste energy. Some of us who leave bulbs and lights on even when they are, they are not necessary. We even use charcoal and we, it is just there. It is not even boiling water, so let's not waste energy at home. The third is planting a tree, especially a fruit tree. During this pandemic lockdown, I have planted some fruit trees, mangoes and oranges, and I'm looking forward to planting even more. So plant a tree, even if it is just for fruits or for timber or just to produce oxygen, plant a tree. Maintain our ecosystem, our wetlands, Let's keep our habitats of other creatures intact. Don't pollute water bodies. Maintain proper waste management practices, especially with the way we deal with plastics. The plastics we generate, the waste plastics we generate at home, how are we disposing them off? Do we sort them out properly? Do we even need to engage and buy these plastics? There was a, a, a national campaign to minimize plastics, but I think we've failed it, and plastic is all over the place, contaminating our soil, and has even gone into water bodies, and soon it has gone into the food chain. Utilize what you have well, and give away excess. Just check your wardrobe, for example. Do you have excess clothing? Do you have excess assets that you may need to give away? so that you depend and use what you can, what you can utilize properly. Remember, we shall give an account to the Lord, the landlord of the earth, in the way and the means and the, the how we have utilized his earth. It is my prayer that as Christians, we shall be good stewards. It's my prayer that we shall always be at the forefront of replenishing the earth and that we will be stewards who are accountable to our God, to the future generation, and to ourselves indeed. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. May he keep you. May he watch over you. Until we meet again. Amen. For your mercy never failed me In all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Oh!